Jason DeMars. I'm the founder of Present Truth Ministries. The desire I had in my heart was to help believers overseas to be established in the present truth. You are listening to Present Truth Ministries Radio, telling the world that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Welcome to PTM Radio. I'm your host, Brother Jason DeMars, and this is a ministry of Present Truth Ministries. We thank you for tuning in. On the next two shows, we have Brother Tim Pruitt, the pastor of Evening Light Tabernacle in Homer, Louisiana, and we're really looking forward to sharing these interviews with you. I believe you'll deeply enjoy them and you'll be blessed by them. So this is part one. It's going to be roughly 20 minutes, and we'll take a little break in the middle of the interview. I also want to remind you, if you have testimonies, if you have questions, if you have a subject that you'd like us to cover, please call us at 612-293-6846 and leave a message, and we'll respond to you on the show. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you enjoy our interview with Brother Tim Pruitt. And Brother Brother Tim, we, we won't age you here, but we'll just say uh, you've been a pastor for, for many, many years. So uh, tell me, Brother Tim, how you came to the message and, and what led you to start Evening Light Tabernacle. Yes, Brother Jason, it's certainly good to be here today and be able to share with your listeners just a little bit about ourselves and our ministry, what God has been doing. Wonderful. And as far as aging, I have been pastoring the Evening Light Tabernacle since 1972, now for 44 years. Mm-hmm. So we are grateful to God for His His great things that Amen. He has done through the years. Mm-hmm. From uh, the the very beginning, I would just like to say that, you know, our church started like many other Mm -hmm. uh, churches, just with uh, very small meetings in in a home, uh, meeting in a living room and uh, with family. And then as others would gather with us, there came need for a building to to meet in because... um, the living room would become crowded and not enough room to accommodate everybody. So, right. yes, we've um, had to find a another location. And mm-hmm. I'll tell you what the the truth as to how we came into the message. Yes. We, as a family, heard uh, Brother Branham since um, the late 1940s when okay. he would first came into Shreveport, Louisiana. And even though we did not attend Life Tabernacle, uh, where he often preached, we did uh, attend uh, some uh, Pentecostal church in the area and uh, would hear about Brother Branham coming in to the Shreveport area and would go to the meetings. Uh, These meetings sometimes would be hosted at Uh, the Life Tabernacle, or across the street at the Municipal Auditorium there in Freeport, Louisiana, and other times in a large tent on the fairgrounds in the city of Freeport. Oh, okay. So we were acquainted with Brother Branham's ministry early on Mm -hmm. and got a copy of A Man Sent from God written by Gordon Lindsay, which really introduced us into the supernatural aspect of Brother Branham's ministry mm-hmm. and his life story. Mm-hmm. So we had a, my, my parents were affected by his parents, were, which were some of the first Jesus named Pentecostal people mm-hmm. in East Texas. Okay. And the war, the war brought them over to uh, Shreveport. My parents moved there to uh, work on the Air Force Base. My dad was an aircraft mechanic. And he was a wayward uh, boy who who did not know the Lord. Mm. So his parents um, sent him 
the book, A Man Sent from God, and encouraged him to go to the meetings and started then hearing Brother Branham also uh, attending a Pentecostal church. Okay. And this all happened even before I was born. Uh-huh. So uh, somewhere around 1951 or two, my uh, parents um, uh, received the baptism of the Holy Ghost there in the 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 uh, Pentecostal movement, okay. and uh, we're attending Brother Branham's meetings as he would come, and, uh, you know, there was a an influence there among the some of the Pentecostals that was actually uh-huh. uh, not in favor of denominations. They felt like it was ruled by man, uh-huh. and so they wanted to be free of uh, denomination, mm-hmm. and so because of that, in 1960. One, my parents and about 30 others left the United Pentecostal Church to start a free Pentecostal work. Okay. And that would be independent of denomination. Mm. Now, at that moment in time, we did not know that Brother Branham was Malachi IV, though we did know he was a mighty prophet mm-hmm. and certainly a spiritual man that was beyond his peers. Uh-huh. And so we started a, my parents started with this other group, we would call it today non-denominational, that term was not known then, Mm -hmm. Uh, but yet an independent Pentecostal work. Mm -hmm. And so they actually uh, went as uh, new little churches do through a series of pastors and finally in the late, or sorry, in the mid-1960s, they elected a pastor who was from the United Pentecostal Church, and part of the requirement for him to pastor the church was for him to give up his papers with the denomination. Oh, because, okay. Because if the pastor, the head of the body, was uh, associated or had papers with the organization, they felt that The church did, too, so they did not want him to be licensed with Mm -hmm. the United Pentecostal Church or controlled by them. Mm -hmm. And so he agreed to do that. He took the church, and after some time of working among the people and getting the confidence of the people, he had the church to vote, and they actually voted with a majority to join the United Pentecostal Church. And so the independent work that we had then became associated with the United Pentecostals. And when that happened, my family left the church. Okay. It was at that time, it was late 1965. We went to the meetings at Life Tabernacle. Okay. I was, I was there when Brother Branham preached the Invisible Union and uh, Works oh, as wow. Faith Express. I was in every one of those services except the businessman service. Okay. Oh, incredible. That, and, and my mother and grandmother attended that. It was an incredible series of sermons. Absolutely oh, phenomenal. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> I I remember sitting there on the wings of a Snow White mm. dove and hearing Brother Branham minister yeah. and uh, tell the different stories of of where that God met him, supernatural events. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, at the end of it, he even wrote a verse to a popular song at that time that just came out uh, on the wings of a snow white dove, and he wrote a verse to that. And I I remember I was only 11 years old, but Mm -hmm. I I sat on the edge of my seat in that meeting, and I was only like 30, 40 feet from Brother Branham as he ministered there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there was such a presence of God, such an awareness of the presence of the angel of the Mm. Lord that was in the building. And I can remember there sitting, and then when he wrote that verse to the song, I I, just in my own childish mind, I said, my, you know, not only can he preach with, with such power and anointing and then so gifted to discern the thoughts of the intents of the heart, but this man can even stand there and write songs as he ministers. So <laughs> <laughs> it it just overwhelmed my childish heart. I'll yeah. Tell you. So absolutely. If, 
In that meeting, we received the our first copy of the Seven Church Age book. Okay. And uh, upon reading that, my parents ordered enough for all of us children to have, which there were six children in the family, of five boys and one girl, mm -hmm. for us all to have uh, our own individual copy of the Seven Church Age book. And for the next two years, we actually sat around for our Sunday service and we read paragraph by paragraph the Seven Church Age book. Oh, along nice. with our Bible and along with listening to tapes on the others. I had an older brother who also started ministering uh, uh, and would uh, minister at an a independent Pentecostal church on Tuesday night. But in those early days, you know, we had no place to go. We had uh, no church, the church that we had. My dad was a building contractor and he had donated land and mm. I even bought bonds for the building of the church, but when they joined the denomination, the organization, we had no place to go. So it went in little storefronts and, and little home meetings and garages and places like that. Oh, um, so in 1968, we moved from Freeport to okay. where that we presently live near Homer, Louisiana. Okay. And I had been preaching now since the age of 15. Mm -hmm. And some people ask me, Brother Tim, when did you know that you were called to preach? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, now that is going to seem very strange to you because I do not remember a day in my life that I didn't know that I wasn't called <laughs> to preach. Mm -hmm. The 43rd Annual Missionary Camp Meeting will be taking place August 2nd through August 5th, 2016, and this will be in Ruth, North Carolina. And speakers at this meeting will be Brother Ron Spencer, Brother Wayne Lawson, and Brother Donnie Reagan. This is a camp that is for missionaries, and missionaries from around the world will be coming to these meetings, but people are welcome to come wherever you are from, even if you're not a missionary, because in fact, as Christians, we're all missionaries. So once again, this is uh, the 43rd Annual Missionary Camp Meetings. You can go to BibleTabernacleTruth.org and go to their events page, and you'll see the details there. And I said, well, now that is going to seem very strange to you, because I do not remember a day in my life that I didn't know that I wasn't called to preach. <laughs> mm -hmm. It never, never was an audible voice or some, you know, some angelic presence that came down and hit me over the head with mm -hmm. a sword. It was something that was in my life from the time I was a young boy. God had planted and it in your spirit, in your soul. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. It was there. In fact, the, when I was turned 11 years old, I asked that year for my birthday a Bible with my name on it and a suit because I was getting ready then at that time to start preaching. Oh my. And it was already on my heart to start ministering the Word of God. And I will say, just having the church age book, those times that we as a family sat and read paragraph by paragraph and discussed with one another what we were reading, mm -hmm. this gave me the substance from which to minister from mm -hmm. at, seven, at 15 years old. So as the, the meetings there in my, my parents' homes began to grow, we realized we needed a building. Mm -hmm. And so at the age of 17, I found uh, an abandoned church building. And it was um, in serious need of repair, but it provided a roof over our, our heads yeah. and a place to meet. And it was only uh, about five minutes away from where I presently lived. It had been, there hadn't been a meeting in it for over 15 years. It had broken window panes and, you know, was in disrepair. And we, we repaired a lot of the window panes and they would... They were old windows, and so the panes would fall out again. And, <laughs> and so 
we had for our convenience we had six uh, lights that hung from the the ceiling and one receptacle to plug in and that was all the convenience mm -hmm. so we made a we had to make an outdoor toilet there was no running waters there was no air conditioner there was no heat wow. and we actually um we actually made barrel heaters out of 55 gallon drums and and piped it out the windows uh so that we could have um wood heat in there mm -hmm. so th that that's how we started that's where we began we we began with a a burden upon our hearts this is a tremendous time mm -hmm. so when you when you were getting it started and people were coming you were doing a lot of witnessing your your family was doing a lot of witnessing or tell me how the people began to come together yes we we started witnessing we witnessed among our relatives our friends and you know inviting people to come to the meetings and we you know at, at that time actually there were people who came simply because i was a just a young preacher boy you know so i was quite a phenomena in the, the minds of some people, you know, because um, being a 15, 16, 17 year old boy with uh -huh. with a passion, with a drive, with a with an anointing, and if people would come even for that reason, mm -hmm. just to just to hear me preach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Incredible. So it was uh, whatever it is that draw, draws the people. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's a flyer or an advertisement in the new p newspaper or. A, or a 15-year-old boy preacher, uh, it's the it's the people coming to hear the word, and they might even come for the wrong reasons, but God can turn them around. Yes, exactly. You know, in those days, there was no churches in our area who mm -hmm. were preaching the apostolic truth of the Bible, Paul's mm -hmm. gospel that had been restored by the messenger, by the Elijah ministry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there, there was plenty of denominational churches that were certainly preaching the denominational views of the various denominations, uh, you know, around. But there were no places that you could go that were preaching the whole word of God. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we were basically cast out are voted out of our our assemblies. We had no place to go. And so we actually had to meet in these old storefronts and abandoned uh, buildings or abandoned churches as mine was or garages because we had such a hunger mm. for the truth mm -hmm. and wanted a place where the word would be free and, mm -hmm. and could be ministered without fear or favor. Mm -hmm. It reminds me so much of the parallel of the Jewish uh, work in mm -hmm. Israel, where that they returned back to their physical homeland in the land of Israel. And because, you know, they, they were expelled from Germany and France and many of the other places where they were persecuted and, right. and despised and hated. And it put a passion within them, in those people that said, we want a place mm -hmm. where the Jews can be free and our beliefs can be respected. Mm -hmm. And the same thing happened on a spiritual aspect as we were driven from the denominations because we couldn't find one that would preach the whole word of God. Yeah. And they had turned into sometimes camps that w were, were just like uh, the camps that that uh, were in Germany or whatever, where they were killing and exterminating the Jews, mm -hmm. and, and when you looked at the souls of people, they were emaciated and hungry and yeah. starving conditions, and so they, there was a drive. I want not the foolishness of man mm -hmm. and the, the theology of man, but I want a place where the word of God can be preached. Yeah, Amen. Amen. And so we met in dimly lit places and uh, <laughs> things like that, just because of the need. Yeah, and even um, where you're at right now, I mean, I've I've visited there myself. You're you are out in the country. I mean, nobody's yeah. going to stumble upon your church, but people are coming there because they're being fed and they're hungry. Yes, so. they're driving two and three hours to yeah. be there. You know, to yeah. to meet 
in a place because they're hungry for the word of God. And this is what Amos said, you know, that Mm -hmm. he said there would come a time there would be a famine. And he said it wouldn't be for bread and water, but for the hearing of the word of God. And certainly there is a famine in the world today and hungry people that has a great need in their life for God. Yes. Yeah, we see it. We see it everywhere. We see it all around the world. People are really hungry and they're they're searching and they're looking for something that's real. They're looking for a living God. Absolutely. A living God. That leads us uh, into uh, the next question I have. Before we uh, get to that next question, we want to take a little break. Thank you, Brother Tim, for being with us on PTM Radio. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the website, alivinggod.com. We're going to talk about uh, what what kind of vision led to that site, who you're working with, Brother Tim, and what, what are some of the continued plans for that. This concludes part one of our interview with Brother Tim Pruitt. Next week on PTM Radio, we'll have part two, and I know you'll enjoy that, so tune in again. Please tell your friends about PTM Radio. Share this on Facebook and on Twitter if it's a blessing to you. Once again, I remind you, call in at 612-293-6846 to leave testimony news, questions, or comments that you have for us. I'm your host, Brother Jason DeMars. May God richly bless you.